Welcome to Spring Grove Nursery in the spring. We are planting trees today. We've been at it for a few days um, and the weather has been great and the soil has been working up perfectly. So I thought it was a good chance to talk about, talk about our soil and talk about our farm. Um, this is my dad here with us. He is the fourth generation on our family farm. I'm the fifth and then my son Joey on spring break, he's helping out this week too. So sixth generation of our farm. So um, we're just really lucky to have great soil here in the nursery. Part of it's because we're on really good ground and you know, other parts of it is how we've taken care of it over the years. Um, Dad, you're the soil expert. <laughs> well, we're on flat black prairie soils, so you know, it's there's a lot of things you can do and there's certain things that uh, it just uh, depends on where you're at. So these soils were built over millions of years by by plants in the prairie decaying over the years, making this black soil that's on top. And if you look at some of this soil, you can see it's, it's perfect, it's granular, it's everything you look for in a soil that's well cared for. Some of the things we do here at the nursery is we rotate through soybeans uh, after trees. So you can see here that there's some soybean residue on the ground uh, one of the things soybeans do, they have a real high carbon to nitrogen ratio, so they're good feed for worms and uh, make worms healthier. Uh, you can see here that there's still some old roots from, the, from a tree crop a few years ago, so there's a lot of things happening down in the soil that, that actually helps keep it in place. But to start with, uh, we had 20 years of no tillage before the nursery, so we were in a corn soybean rotation where we'd raise corn one year and soybeans the next. And the tillage, we never tilled it because tillage oxidizes off carbon, much like poking a poker, you're sitting around the campfire and somebody takes a stick and pokes the fire and it flares up. It injects a bunch of oxygen into the soil and, and uh, the and creates carbon dioxide that's given off into the atmosphere. So here, with no tillage, we have a really high carbon content. And you can see from the black soils, you know, how much carbon is actually in them. A pound of extra carbon holds four pounds of water. So our trees have more water available to them when we get into the dry July, August period. And, and uh, so when you're, you know, when you're, trying to take care of your farm because of sixth generation coming up, you know, things like no-till make a difference, things like crop rotation that we've been involved with for years, and now with trees, even with trees, we rotate out of trees to soybeans that fix some nitrogen and actually add food for, for different organisms that live in the, in the soil itself, more for the bacteria and for the lichens and, and uh, the like. So. Uh, we like to think we're trying to take care of our farm the best we can for future generations. Thanks, Dad. Uh, well, it looks like the tree planter is loaded up and ready to go, so let's uh, get to work here. We'll go to Jamie on the tree planter here in a minute, and we'll watch the soil go right through the planter. All right, it's my favorite day at the nursery in the spring. It's the day we plant trees. Well, we'll plant trees for several days here, but it's the best time in the nursery. We're, we're starting new and we're putting stuff in the ground. We're really happy with the way the soil's working up. Like I've always said that the most important day on our end in the nursery is when the trees go in the ground. We're planting about 2,000 a day. We're planting 6,000 trees this year. It's, uh, we're, we're, we're getting a little more in the ground this year. It's just some varieties that we like and we want to try and you know, new varieties that are out there. We want to jump in and see what we can do with them here at how our long, nursery. How long will these be in the ground? These will be in the ground probably three to four years. Uh, some will be in the ground five, some will be in the ground two or three, depending on what size we brought them in. When are you going to be done planting? We should be done planting tomorrow afternoon if nothing goes wrong. And then what? 
Then we're going to start digging trees for ship and deliver. All right, close her out. <laughs> it's a perfect day at the nursery. There's no sun out, no wind. It's a nice 55 degrees. It's a perfect day for planting trees. So we're up here now in the cab of the tractor uh, planting trees and now Dad's in the tractor driving seat and if you remember last year we shot a planting video and Dad was talking about uh, some of the new technology from agriculture, row crop ag, because um, him and, and my brother uh, have a corn and soybean operation and so some of this technology is used in row crop ag agriculture and we're now kind of applying it on the tree farm and seeing what we can do with it and experimenting. And last year we were showing our auto steer, which as you can tell, Dad is not currently steering the tractor, it's driving itself. And one of the um, things that goes along with that auto steer is the ability to track varieties. And that's something new that we're doing now this year. So Dad's gonna talk about um, some of the technology in the, in the tractor. Uh, first off, I'll give you a little tour of the technology that's in this cab. Uh, some of it's for planters and row crop. Uh, we've got an a apparatus back here that folds and unfolds the planter to go down the road. You know, cell phone like everybody else. We use it to call, tell them when we're going to be there for lunch. And just like the old, uh, the old crews from uh, back, back in the day when they used to uh, shuck corn and do all of that, you go home for a big meal at lunch and a piece of warm apple pie. But, our generation has kind of moved that to uh, room temperature cookies from uh, Juul. But uh, anyway, then we got a planter monitor here that we're not using to, for trees, but it gives you things like spacing of the corn, singulation, uh, population, skips, multiple drops, all this kind of stuff on one monitor. Just to give you an idea, the technology's already there. Uh, I'll shut that one off. And you can look down here and focus on this screen for a minute. You can see here that we're recording. There's kind of a small map of the field. I could actually pull up a bigger one. The ability to, to run the auto steer and adjust widths on it. But up here it says we're planning Acer Red Sunsets from Schmidt. And, and if you look at the technology that's built into this tractor to record all of this information, for the geeks in the crowd, you know, we're using uh, uh, RTK to adjust the GPS to an accuracy that's, that's less than one centimeter, okay? And we can record things like elevation, but we can also take these maps and apply them on soil fertility maps, on variety maps, on maps of uh, soil types, on different drainage patterns that we've identified and put into the software. Yeah, why don't you show so, some of the layers of how that could work? Yeah, I'll give you an idea here. This is just a block of trees that we planted yesterday, and you can see all those colors representing different varieties. Another way that this puts it out is they're all by colors and the different varieties up here. That's a little hard to, to read, but here are your different colors and, and the different types of trees that, that we planted uh, yesterday. So this went back to the office and, and got printed out on, a, on our home computer basically. And uh, so now this is recorded forever. So when we start looking at things of how this particular type of tree did, you know, this is fo following soybeans. Sorry, I got to adjust the planter. Uh, you know, this is following soybeans. Uh, that's recorded in there. This is following a certain type of tree two years ago Down that was there. harvested here. So now that we have all of these layers in our mapping software, we can keep that information in our computer and overlay it with other information like types of trees that we may be planting way in the future. Is there a reason that we shouldn't be planting red sunsets where we raised red sunsets before. Maybe they do better if, you know, those, those crops are rotated between types of trees. We can start to look at that. It's hard to predict what kind of information we're gonna get. Right now, it's gonna be real handy for inventory and, 
and sales. So yeah, it's kind of it's cool, I think, because when all of this technology started in um, row crop agriculture, Dad on his farm was one of the first people in the country to embrace it and do it. And when we were trying to set this up uh, with my brother Chris on the computer um, to do this with trees, we're we're scrolling through all the crops and there's no trees as an available option. So we we just had to pick a different crop to use for now, but this is not being used in nurseries at all. So it's, again, it's just new technology and trying to figure out how that could benefit our crop. Right. So uh, with that, you know, we got the auto steer, we got the recording. Um, we didn't get to the point where we got the tree drop this year. We're hoping that maybe next year we'll have that in place. So the guy placing the trees with the tree planter can put them in on a grid. We didn't get there this year. But uh, anyway, that's our technology okay. update for this year. We're coming up to the end of a row and we're gonna have to turn the tractor around, which will not work on auto steer. You're gonna actually have to physically turn the tractor. So, so for now, we'll sign out from the cab. Okay, <laughs> all right, goodbye.